Uh, thank you, Cahirlock. Uh, At the outside, uh, Taoiseach, I would like to congratulate you. Uh, I think the idea of Taoiseach Michal Martin will take a bit of getting used to, but on a personal note, uh, I want to wish you well. Uh, you've waited for this for a long time, and uh, there's no doubt that today must be a very proud day for you and your family. I also congratulate uh, the cabinet ministers who have been appointed today. The election of a three-party coalition government is taking place in what are the most inauspicious of circumstances. As a result of COVID-19, the country is going through a devastating period with tragically 1,736 people who have lost their lives. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their livelihoods and countless lives have been changed forever. Worldwide, we must remind ourselves that we are still in the midst of a deadly pandemic. And here in Ireland, we must recognise that it remains a real and ever-present danger. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Chief Medical Officer, Dr Tony Holohan, and all of those working on the front line, uh, particularly in the health area, but across retail and all of those other essential services. People who have done exceptional work over recent months and who continue to do that work on behalf of us all. I also want to acknowledge the public who have adhered magnificently to the advice, despite having lost loved ones, lost jobs, and made so many huge sacrifices over recent months. However, today we must recognise that in February's election, the electorate roundly rejected the kind of politics provided by the outgoing government of Fine Gael, supported by Fianna Fáil. Rarely before had people been so exercised by and so conversant with government policy and the harmful negative effects much of it was having on their quality of life and that of their families. People had enough of the high cost of living and the difficulty in accessing those public services which are so essential to living a decent life. On top of that, there is the raft of other charges and costs, such as insurance, energy costs, mortgage interest, costs that the government had failed to control. And all of this in the context of 25% of the workforce on low pay and in an increasingly precarious and insecure world of work. But you know, the cruel irony is that the very people who created those problems are today now back in power. During the election, the most common response on the doorsteps to the question of who people would be voting for was, well, not Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael anyway. And when the votes were counted, those once large parties, the civil war parties, mustered just 43% of the vote between them. People voted predominantly for a different kind of politics. They voted for a new approach and a different value system or ideology. The general election result strongly signified the desire of the Irish people for a fundamental shift towards a more equal, fairer, and more inclusive society. In mid-April, as the pandemic had taken hold, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael agreed a framework document. It contained many worthy aspirations, and in an apparent candid admission of mistakes made, they made a remarkable statement. They said, we know that there is no going back to the old ways of doing things, Radical actions have been taken to protect as many people as possible, and new ways of doing things have been found in a time of crisis. The importance of a well-resourced, properly functioning and responsive state has never been clearer, they said. And for a moment, we actually thought that lessons had been learned, that the penny had finally dropped, and that there was a realization that a strong state is critical to the well-being of a society and to people's lives. Because when the pandemic struck, the frailties of our state were all too graphically exposed. Our under-resourced public health service 
with nowhere near enough staff or hospital beds. Our arm's length privatised model of social care. The prevalence of low paid, low hours work with limited rights and protections. Our disjointed, underfunded, mainly for profit childcare services. High rents and lack of security for so many tenants. Overcrowded and overpriced housing. Inhumane conditions in direct provision and so many other weaknesses. In responding to COVID, the government moved to socialise many of these essential public services because that was the only way that we would survive. And initially, it did seem like the government was serious about radical change. However, very soon it became clear that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael fully intended going back to the old ways of doing things as soon as COVID was brought under control. But people had voted for permanent change, for a genuine social contract where people pay taxes according to their means and in return have access to universal public services and where government works for the common good. But that was never the Fine Gael way. Fine Gael operates on the basis that the market is king and that if you can't afford to pay for services, services that are available as of right in most other European countries, then it's tough luck and you don't get access to essential services. And that is, the one, of, and that is one of the reasons why, when Fine Gael approached the Social Democrats with a view to coalition, we knew that they were not going to change their spots. It was clear that while Fine Gael talked the talk of inclusion and public services, there was no financial underpinning at all to the aspirations. And so it is with the programme for government. Continued reliance on developers and for the elusive affordable housing that we've been promised so often. And another 18 months of free reign and poor planning standards with strategic housing developments. Supposedly accelerating Sláinte Care, but without any budget till at least 2022, and continuing to divert funding away from the public healthcare system through the NTPF. No indication of a public model of childcare, no reform of corporation tax or other taxes, and on and on. The lack of any real funding commitment to change runs right through the programme for government. It is clear that following the immediate crisis, the intention is to get back to business as usual. Key questions about the size and duration of the stimulus package needed and the extent of the borrowing required are kicked down the road. Fianna Fáil, on the other hand, had choices about where it would go. They knew very well that the market-led politics of Fine Gael, which they supported for the last four years, had done the country and both parties much damage. Yet when they had the opportunity to make a break with the past, to shift to the left and lead a genuine social democratic government that people had voted for, they eschewed that opportunity and instead locked themselves into Fine Gael. And that is an utterly retrograde step for the country. I genuinely hope that the Green Party is successful in furthering the climate change and biodiversity agenda. But I have to express concern about that being possible to achieve within the prevailing agenda of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. The lack of any commitment to a reduction in carbon emissions in the context of the national herd is reflective of just that challenge. For our part, the expanded Social Democrats group will play a constructive and positive role in this thal. We will fight unapologetically for a fair society based on high quality universal public services and for the kind of politics which challenges the many vested interests in Irish society and holds us back so much. We will provide strong opposition in order to hold the government to account. And we will work tirelessly 
to further the ideals of social democracy in order to create the kind of society which we believe will serve the best interests of all of the Irish people. Gurus Mahagod.